This is part one of a two-part video series on tool post grinders. Hello once again, this is Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and it has recently come to my attention that I have never shown you my full inventory of tool post grinders. So before me I have five grinders, most of them are Dumore brand, and I think I'm going to go over them one by one and explain them to you. I'm not going to do a demonstration with any of them today. I'm not going to do any actual grinding. But I will show you some links to other videos that I had on tool post grinding. So let's begin looking at this beautiful set of grinders. I have six videos that I have made over the years regarding do more tool post grinders. So check them out if you are interested. This is the website for the Dumore Grinder Company. They are out of Racine, Wisconsin. Original home of Johnson Wax. If you're ever up that way, check out the Johnson Wax headquarters designed by the world's greatest architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. This is a page out of the 1950 Atlas Lathe catalog and pictured here is their heavy duty tool post grinder. You may have one of these. I don't believe I've ever seen one in the flesh. This is a page out of the 1956 South Bend Lathe Catalog and pictured here is their tool post grinder and you may recall that I owned one of these at one time and it is featured in one of those videos that I mentioned. I sold it at Arnfest several years ago and I wish I had not. And here's another view of it. It used 4 inch wheels. And here's yet another view of it showing their internal grinding attachment. The other ones, of course, are for external grinding. Very quickly, with all of the grinders and attachments in one spot, this is the 2-inch do more, sometimes called the Tom Thumb. This is the 3-inch do more, and this is the 4-inch do more. Over here is the hand grinder made by Dumore and given to me by the Dumore company. Almost brand new. It can be used for internal or external grinding but very small wheels. Same thing with this Craftsman grinder. And there are attachments for those down here to hold them onto the lathe tool post. And here are some of the dressers, diamond dressers, that are used to dress the wheels. Now let's go over these one at a time and I will give close-ups of all of the machine tags. Okay, let's start with the smallest one. This is the 2-inch Tom Thumb. It's the cutest and one of my favorites. Well, they're all favorite, I guess. How do you pick your favorite's child? Notice it's got an oiler here on the spindle. Again, 2-inch wheel toggle switch, no belt guard, no wheel guard, and ungrounded plug, which tells you something about the age of this device. Notice the oiler right here on the spindle. It is a brush type motor. Some of these uh, T-nuts I have made myself, that's just a piece of ready rod, but if we look into the box, there are several others here, and these fit the other machines as well. I just keep them in the steel box because this is the only box that I have or case for these uh, do more grinders. Now this little grinder needs a new cord and when I put it on it'll be a three wire grounded type. Other than that it's in quite good condition. Strictly for smaller work on smaller lathes this would be perfect for a 9 or a 10 inch or even a 12 inch lathe. Kind of noisy. This is my 3 inch Dumore grinder, still mounted on my 12 inch Craftsman lathe from a recent video. Okay, here's item 2. This is the 3 inch grinding wheel. This wheel's also worn down a little bit. Notice that there is a wheel guard, but no belt guard. Here's an oiler again for the spindle. It's a brush type motor, 13,000 RPM with an inline switch, also just two wire. Actually, it's two wire now, 
some fool cut off the ground prong. I think Dumore needs a lesson in strain relievers. Notice the torsion spring here that allows you to relax the belt. Now to adjust the height of the wheel onto center, or should I say the center of this shaft should be on in line with the center shaft of the lathe by on center I guess that's what I mean you can change the elevation by loosening this bolt that my finger is on and then this sleeve I guess you'd call it can be moved up or down to change the elevation of it this is a very handy size a little heavier than you might think. It certainly would not work on a six inch lathe. This is a sidebar. You can ignore it if you want, but this is my little skill hand grinder. I don't think I ever used it. It came from a garage sale. I do like it because there's a switch right there, but what I really wanted to show you, and it is three prongs, so this would be probably from the late 50s or early 60s but that's back when they were still using strain relievers like this with the spring and I remember as a small child watching my mother iron clothes and there was a big old spring on there and I was amazed and how truly useful and uh, they actually do the job not like one of the rubber ones because some of the rubber ones and they needed to be fairly long, but they would crack as well because they weren't rubber, they were plastic. So this is actually a pretty nice little tool, and it has a $200 or $400 little Jacob's Chuck, whatever that size is, that would also fit onto that little drill press. End of sidebar. Okay, this is the 3-inch grinder that I just talked about. Now I want to go on to the 4 inch, but I'm picturing them together here just so you can compare the size of the two different grinders and possibly the different design. So I'll leave this one set here for a minute or two while I do compare them. Okay, note here that the grinding wheel and the belt is on the same end, whereas over on this one, this one they're on opposite ends. That way one guard covers both. Also note that this is a sealed spindle here. There are no oilers. They would be ball bearing of course. So there's no Gitz oiler as you see it right here. This one uses a V-belt although you can't quite see it compared to the other ones that used flat belts. The switch is right here and this is an induction motor split phase type. No capacitor start where the other smaller ones are brush type motors which tend to be in my opinion louder. Now I'm going to remove this one and and talk strictly about this. Remember I'm always showing you the tags on these right at the same time approximately that I'm talking about the machine. Three prong. This one was new in 1970. And I do like the color of the Dumore. You may not know this, but the Dumore company is famous for its small motors, which had many, many other uses in drill presses and in industrial machinery where they were doing peck drilling, possibly from several different directions. And you'll find those in the Dumore catalog or check out that Dumore website that I talked about. Now, to get this thing on center, there is no other way that I've found other than to use shims. That's why this piece of half inch steel is on here as a big washer to raise it to the height that I needed on my Atlas lathe. Air cooled. They're all air cooled. Now speaking of air cooled, you may remember if you watched those other videos where I was very critical of the south bend because it drew the grinding dust into the motor. So, as I remember, the intake was on this end, whereas on the Dumors it's on this end. Be sure and look at the end of my videos. I put lots of still pictures on. Notice that there are two tags on here. This is the grinder 
tag and this is the motor tag. As I said earlier, all of these do more grinders up to this point were built for external grinding. Some of them were available with different quills to allow internal grinding. And several years back, and I don't remember even why I did it, but I put this homemade extender that will screw onto the shaft. Got to take this, this wheel off and it will allow some internal grinding. I think maybe I used this when I ground chuck jaws and it was semi-successful but small wheels are always a problem because they wear so rapidly. This is not approved by Dumore or even by Tubal Cain. Well that concludes part one of this two-part video series. It's run long enough I need to break it into two be sure and watch part two where I continue to talk about grinders including the two that you see right here and all of the attachments and dressers and so on. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part two.